Hey, welcome to the second video of the series that I'm doing. So I did real estate on the last video. This one I'm going to do groceries, taxes, and gas prices. And I'm going to show you how that's going to cause our economy to pop. So right now we're in this big bubble. It's blowing up. I showed you how real estate, the comparison from the 08 crash to how it's looking right now. And I'm going to show you that big bubble, that second part of the big bubble, that's just going to absolutely burst. And we can call this actually inflation. So let's get going. All right, back to the whiteboard because this seems to work out pretty good. Again, if you have any questions, please just leave them in the comments section. But let's start with our grocery bill today. Now, I live in California. And California right now is at its absolute worst when it comes to gas prices and food prices. Okay. So I'm going to use California as an example. You can follow along because I've heard on my TikTok, some folks that are in the Midwest that say, oh, our bills only got up 40 or 50 bucks. Well, I'm going to go into cost of living too a little bit on that. Okay. So my grocery bill in January, whoops, just January, averaged about $90 a week. That's about what we spend. We don't spend a lot on food. Uh, you know, we spend more money on the kids' foods and snacks and lunches for school. I got two daughters, and my wife and I, we, we don't eat, like, fast food or anything. We make our own meals, vegetables, fruits, stuff like that. So in, on March 25th, for the same exact grocery list that I go for every single time, I spent $220. And by the way, this was at Walmart. Same stuff I have been buying for the whole time went up $130 in total cost. And that's including the sales tax we have here, which is 7 and a 7.75%, okay? And yet <laughs> It's like $130, a lot of money to a lot of people. Now, to me, I laughed about it. But for most people, they would choke because if you're buying weekly groceries, let's just say it was $100 more, that's $400 that you don't have. Now, Governor Newsom's going to cover $400 of the gas for you for the year. Wow. But we'll get into that another day. But $400 extra a month. In groceries is not in most people's budget so where do you cut back you start calling the bank and going can I make an extra day can I make a half payment on the car you start skipping payments on cars RVs making partial payments on mortgages or rent because what are you going to prioritize you're going to prioritize food and gasoline right now because of work those are the needs right so your needs went up 60%, just under, I'm going to say just under 60% in two months, okay? So that's your gasoline, your heating, your air conditioning, all the stuff that you need, okay? Your, your, your clothing, your basic clothing went up. To go to the laundromat went up because your gasoline prices went up. Your food prices are going up. All those things are mashing together, okay? So, we're, why, why is this happening? Well, everybody says supply and demand, right? Well, that's not true. That's not always true. So, supply and demand do play a part in it. But the other part that it plays into it, okay, is the fact that we are not self-sufficient we depend on oil from foreign countries even though we are the biggest producer and have the have the ability to be the big biggest producer of oil crude oil in the world we depend on Saudi Arabia Russia up until recently Okay, uh, Canada, 
etc. Africa. So the liberal left is happy to let everybody else destroy the earth and other countries, but we can't get crude oil from our own country. So it is not a supply and demand problem. It's that we're not energy efficient. America, when it was at its best, it said made in America. Cars were made in America. Now they're made everywhere and assembled in America. RVs are a collection of items from different countries, like mostly China, shipped in and assembled in America. Nothing is built here. Okay, So we are not self-sufficient enough to make sure that the world oil prices don't affect us. So here's how it works with groceries, oil, gasoline, and just your basic needs. Here's something nobody will agree with me on because they don't understand it because nobody covers it. Oil is a world commodity. There's a world market. So a barrel of, cool, barrel of crude oil is determined by the world economy. It is the closest thing next to gold, silver, diamonds, and stones. It's the closest thing we have to a world currency. So when we pay $136 a barrel for crude oil, so is everyone else. What I mean by everyone else, I mean England, Canada, Russia. Well, not Russia anymore because they have their own oil. Uh, India, Australia. People that are not energy efficient with their own country, that don't depend on their own energy production, gets a world economy with oil. So when Russia gets cut, gets cut off and has sanctions against them about oil, even though we only import 2% of our oil from Russia, everyone else, including India, including a lot of African countries that don't produce crude oil, they get it from Russia, and it affects them. So it drives the price of oil up. So again, if we were energy efficient, if we were a country that was, if we were the number one producer of oil in the world, if we were an exporter of oil throughout the world, then gas prices and oil prices would go down. But because oil is up, which oil, crude oil guys, makes several things. Batteries, plastic, car parts, including electric cars. Uh, it also helps transport food. It's part of our transportation. Okay, farmers use it for many things. So farms depend on crude oil. Okay, uh, grocery stores and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. So all of these things are affected by oil prices. So when you go down to the market in January, when gas prices on a national average, well, let's just use California. When gas prices in California were $2.99 a gallon, our food was less. Even though we still had a supply and demand problem. We had a supply and demand problem throughout the pandemic. Food prices, beef, would go up 4%, 3.5%, and would stabilize as oil prices stayed low. The minute oil prices jumped and gas prices jumped, it went instantaneous. Well, what about corporate greed? Okay, let's go into corporate greed. I want to go, I love talking about corporate greed. So as a corporation, as a business owner myself, okay, 
I take home, if I'm lucky at the end of this year, I'll take home 7% of my gross receipts. Guess what most billionaires take home, even with inflation? 7%. Now, of course, they make money other ways, mostly from their investments in different you know, areas. But in their own corporation, go look it up yourself. 7% or less goes into that person's pocket. You got taxes, employee costs, cost of transportation. Who makes the money? Not the corporation. Do you know who makes all the money with all this? You know what's really sick? Is who actually makes the money on this? Well, we'll say government officials. Governments make the most money during an inflated during inflation so politicians make a lot of money okay investors and we're gonna say the energy producers not the gas companies I'm not talking about Chevron Shell I'm not talking about those guys I'm talking about the guy who sold that crude oil to Shell or Chevron. That's the person making all the money. See, that's what's sick. You guys call corporate greed on the left-wing liberals. And in reality, the corporations are not making that much more money. It's the guys that sold the energy. They're making the most money. Let me tell you, the difference between $58 a barrel and $136 a barrel, Shell, Chevron, they don't make that money. The guy who produced the oil and shipped it to them made the money. So we did it ourselves, guys. How do we do it to ourselves? We're going to create this big bubble and it's going to pop because we, the American people, just can't help ourselves. Okay. The first thing we did is we, we, we nominated Democrats to be in control. And they don't have any clue, most of them, have no clue how to run a country, let alone run a business. We let Biden take power. We let AOC take power. And we let the squad take power. Now, in these two's defense, I'm going to defend, I am not a fan of the bartender and her squad. I'm not a, I'm not a fan. But I'm going to defend her a little bit, okay? They are right. That climate change needs to eventually happen. We need to get to the point where we're not killing our ozone layer. I'm going to agree with them on that. But how we get there, I don't agree. How we get there is not electric vehicles. And I'm going to get into that in the next video is why electric videos are not or electric cars are not going to save us, okay? So, the other thing we do that we just can't help ourselves with is we spend. This is more of a killer than these guys. I know that sounds hard to understand, but we just can't help ourselves, okay? I can. I made $355,000 last year. 49% of my paycheck went to taxes and health insurance. 49. I only took home 51% of my income, and yet I still put $60,000 away last year out of my income. It's gone. It's put away. It's not touched. Okay? Because I don't go buy a fancy car. I don't go buy a truck with a $1,500 payment or $1,200 payment. My wife and I shop at the Goodwill or at, or at secondhand stores for the kids because they grow so fast. It's like if I go buy them new clothes, <laughs> they're just going to grow out of it in three months. We, we go buy... We, we buy subscriptions to Netflix and stuff. We don't buy cable and 
75 inch TVs. I do these YouTube channels with a cell phone, a cheap microphone, and cheap lighting. But we as a car, uh, uh, America, we can't stop spending. We got a little money in our pocket, and we got to go empty it. So now that we've emptied our pockets and prices went up, we got no way, no story. So my last thing I'm going to tell you is how we're going to get out of this. Okay. So for grocery people, grocery people. Okay. So at the grocery store, like for example, the number one thing I'm going to tell you to do is coupons. So any more digital coupons are the best way to go with saving at the grocery store. Okay. So um, I don't have an example, but I have a, uh, I just got a magazine I'm going to go through. I'm going to start clipping coupons. Uh, regular coupons, I'm going to download digital ones. Okay. And the reason why I'm doing that is because number two, club memberships are not enough. But in combination with these two, you can save a lot of money at the grocery store. Okay. And number three, the best thing you can do is no extra driving. Don't do any extra driving. So if you live by a nearby park and stay getting the car and driving over there, walk over there. If you've got a membership at a gym, go to walk to the gym, take a bus. Okay. Don't do any more extra driving than you need to. Don't drive to six grocery stores because you think you're going to save a little bit of money. I'm going to show you more into that in future videos. But until then, hopefully that explained a little bit. Um, and the next video is going to be about the car industry and electric cars.